My name is Patanapong Oat Muntian and I grew up in Bangkok, Thailand and I have lived in London for six years now. Goodness, it's been quick. Tell us all about your idea of charms. Idea of charms, okay. Well, um, firstly, I grew up with a lot of charms because my dad, he's a very enthusiastic collector of Buddhist amulets. So since I was born, I always surrounded by them um, in different sh shapes and size. We have a little praying room in our house and in that there's thousands of charms and um, Buddhist amulets. So my relationship with it, I suppose, has always been quite intimate because you know it's, it's in the family, it's very much my dad. And um, so my, da my dad grew up in um, Batum Thani, which is just a little province next to Bangkok. And from a very poor background, he didn't have a, an opportunity to go to proper school. So his mother sent him to the temple for education, and you know, which is quite a common thing for a lot of um, lower class Thai families. And so he, he was a novice boy almost for a lot of monks in the temple. And so he had very close relationship with, with Buddhism and also amulets, which, you know, arguably it's not traditional um, Thai, but, you know, that the whole relics culture come from Brahma and also Hindu influence. But nevertheless, it has always been his interest. And he started collecting them since he was a, a novice boy in the temple. So since he was like 14, he would save up some money or work for them and, and the monk would give him some. So since 14 years old and now um, going into his 70s, the collection has grown massively. And so it's it's always been around me since I grew up, although I don't really know so much of its significance or commercial value. But, you know, every time I see it, I always think of my dad. So, yeah, that's kind of my relationship with it. And you said your mother comes from the South. Yes. So um, she also believes in a lot of charms and, you know, spiritual objects as my great-grandfather from my mother's side actually was a shaman in, in the Konsi Tamarad village. So again, you know, from both sides, I grew up very spiritual um, background and have lots of these beliefs in amulets and charms and different kind of rituals that come along with them. But you yourself have a different relationship to these than your parents. Yes. So. Um, Again, with a lot of families, I think during the past uh, 50 years or so, uh, there has been intense migration to Bangkok. So a lot of families outside of Bangkok that come from working class background, like my parents, would move to Bangkok. And that changes the way we live, our beliefs, our culture, um, and things that we're close to. So I grew up a bit more distance than, than my parents in terms of, you know, th um, their beliefs and the rituals that I grew up with. For example, with my mother in um, Nakhon Si Tamarat, they would have um, very big festival rituals, um, mediums, shamanism was a big part of their life and village. Um, but for me, growing up in Bangkok, it's a bit more distance. So almost in a way, these objects are... Uh, kind of reminders for me of those past, of those background. And um, so I always related to them in that kind of romanticized um, relationship. But yeah, so but it's quite different to my parents. I mean, they strongly believe in these objects and um, their abilities, powers that they have. I, too, to, to a certain extent, I still do believe that they work, but maybe for a different reason, a different understanding um, to my parents. And um, 
I wish I have that close sort of relationship to them as as my parents do. But yeah, unfortunately, it's different because I grew up in, um, I suppose I'm a Gen Y generation. So, um, you know, I grew up with MTV. I grew up with internet. Um, obviously, I had studied abroad a lot since I was really young. So I did my high school in Texas. I did my bachelor in Sydney and now living in London. So I've been exposed to different cultures and that affects the way I look at my own culture. So it it's, um, yeah, it's unfortunately, it's a different kind of relationship. But I mean, it's interesting, yeah. But you've also revisited your great-grandfather's um, shamanistic, how shall I explain it? Yeah, it's a story, yeah. So for me, in a way, as you say, you know, that, that different relationship inspires me um, through my study here to go back and look at that relationship. So in my master at Central St. Martin, I did a project called um, The Urban Shaman. So drawing the line between myself and my great grandfather as a shaman. And, you know, we're almost like a different world because um, he was a trade man and then he studied all this um, shaman practice from a temple in in south of Thailand. And me growing up here as, a, as an artist, you know, I'm trying to draw that line to whether it's that kind of social connection, you know, the social role of, a, of an artist and a shaman. So that project really led me back into my mother's and family and I was interviewing a lot of people, people that had been healed by him, you know, through different rituals. I was collecting um, as part of my research a lot of oral histories, um, recipe of food that disappearing or, you know, things that he, he ate during his time, um, stories, ghost stories particularly, which um one of my favorite things. Um so it's for me I, I find it fascinating that um, it, in some way, out of my project, I've, I feel like there is this connection that's still going on, but it's been transferred into a different place, in a different form, in a different context. But still, it's, you know, it's this relationship that's still going on, so yeah. So can you describe to us perhaps some, some objects? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so one of the objects that I found really interesting through this research is um, the shadow puppets, which of course has a great significance in south of Thailand as part of their rituals. Um, what I found in terms of the ritual of making them were fascinating because, you know, some shadow puppets, for example, the main character, the hermit, have to be a certain kind of buffalo that the skin came from, so you have to be an all black buffalo that have certain qualities. Or the um, the lead female character have to be a virgin cow that have to be sacrificed in order to make this puppet. So you know this um, sacred culture of making the puppet, I find that fascinating as objects, it's also, also really beautiful. You know, there's a lot of craftsmanship and it's to represent that connection with um, countries like Indonesia, where, you know, that the culture possibly came from, the kind of aesthetic, you can see that and transfer into Thai, certain quality of Thai aesthetic. So I find as objects, uh, they're amazing. Um, what are the objects? The drums. I'm always fascinated by this, the drums and how, you know, a lot of musical instruments actually that were used specifically to induce trans experience in certain rituals and um, how people worship them. You know, in he here, of course, we have great respects for our instruments, um, but it's another level in, in Thailand because you, you have to respect them as your teacher, as they are possessed by certain spirits that allows, you know, rituals to happen. So I find them as object fascinating. And of course, the amulets, as um, you know, as I said before, I have close relationship, almost like a family member, um, with the amulets. 
and the soil, because you know the, what's significant about emulets are partly the soil that makes them, um, the earth that come into the making of that, and some of those really really old, you know, you're, you're handling basically the the soil from like two hundred years old. You know, I think that's a beautiful thing in itself, and it's in a way it makes you quite grounded, because you know it's part of the ground. Um, and also the ritual that go into making these, because a lot of them, the price of them increase if they're obviously older, or if they're made by um, a very famous monk with famous, you know, mythical um, qualities. So the ritual that makes them also make them quite expensive or important. So if it were made in, you know, a hundred years anniversary of a certain famous temple then um, they have a really big value. So, you know, I find them so interesting as, as social objects and the history that they bear with them. Could, us, could you tell us a little bit of the difference between sort of Buddhist chants and more uh, native Thai ones? Well, what do you mean by Buddhist chants, though? So, well, I mean, amulets, mm, chanting, the Pali language. Yeah. Or, <laughs> so what this has come from my own observations I don't know how valid this is right but I'm referencing um, a book by um, Philip you know Philip Cornwell very Thai and because maybe again because my relationship is a bit distant and I, I don't use them so much as a you know, religious objects because my Buddhist belief is that you know I, I don't hold on to objects Buddhist Buddhism for me is a lot more philosophical and a meditation in that sense. But with Thai culture, it's a lot about objects and it's a lot about, you know, um, how these objects, it's almost influenced by a lot of things, you know, as, as Philip said in his book, Thai culture is very much a mixing pot. Maybe what unique about Thai is not so much of it, oh, it's a Thai thing, but it's actually a, a version of different other country. And it's a it's twist. It's that sense of twist that's what I define as a Thai culture. You know, so in a way, traditional Buddhism would, you know, would have these amulets in, in quite uh, religious or significant worshipping kind of way but in Thai when it's translated to Thai you get so many more um, variations on it so you get really weird objects you will get like dry fruit um, you know that one of the mythical fruit from the Hinmapan forest the Makanari Pun or the, or the fruit which came into a body of a female so people would worship like things that look like that. People would worship things like uh, water elephant, which is again a mythical creature from um, the Himalayan forest, and which is, you know, it traditionally is not really Buddhism in any way. But it's a lot of myth. It's a lot of stories. It's a lot of uh, that which is, has been part of our Thai culture because you know obviously um, Thai king is believed to be the reincarnation of Rama from Ramakhi and so you know it's a lot about stories which um, interrelate into our culture and what become, what makes it Thai so it affects the same way with the amulets or these objects that we have variation of them which is amazing and um, the very big phenomenon a few years back is this um, a certain object from the Konsi Tamarat which is um, my, my mother province um, it's a really big rounded, like this size, so quite big for a Buddhist amulet. And um, it was created from a myth about the head of um, the province who acquired this mythical power that people shoot him with a gun and they um, and he didn't die. And also, it, you know, it have all these stories that came with it. And then it becomes such a big phenomenon throughout Thailand. Everyone would try to find these um, amulets, and um, they would, you know, it would come in various types of versions. But it have nothing related to Buddhism. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, what I mean, I mean, like the the guy who initiated it, it's a great um, Buddhist practitioner, but 
in no way that relates to the teaching of the Buddha. So in a way, I find that um, fascinating, you know, all these trends of new emulets that come up. Um, it doesn't really relate to the actual Buddhist practice, but for Thai people, it's very much part of their um, religious practice. So, yeah. So your father came from one tradition and mm -hmm. your mother came from another tradition mm. and you grew up in between that. Uh, how did Among other things. <laughs> among other things, <laughs> yes. yes. But perhaps you could, um, you could uh, comment a little bit about that bit difference between your mom and your father? Oh, I don't know much about my father despite his... because um, I think he was adopted so um, his adoptive family, his father, his stepfather, was a Khmer, you know, from from um, Cambodia. So he has that kind of belief. Um, apparently, he has full body tattoo, and he has loads of um, mythical powers. And um, he like. The only thing I knew about him, basically, my my. Um, Father, my father's stepfather is the story of how he died. So he was um, kind of looking after this piece of land and it's worth a lot of money and there's a group of people come in and try to kill him to steal the land. And no matter what they did, they couldn't kill him because he was covered in tattoo like this, you know, and he had great amulets that protects him. And um, so they shot him with a gun, he didn't die. They like used knife and things, they couldn't cut through his skin. Eventually they found a place in his body that didn't have any tattoo, which was his um, butthole. And they stabbed something through that, and that's how he got killed. So um, the story becomes so popular um, among the villagers and um, you know, this whole increased the whole mythical quality of it. And that's the only thing I know about my father's family. Um, and it's, it's kind of, you know, in, in that area near Bangkok as well. So in, it's, in a way, it's not so dramatic as much as my mother's family, which is from the south and, you know, very intensely revolves around shamanism and um, rituals and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, both of them are, are different in the way that different kind of locations obviously in the south you've got a lot more um, Hindu you know relations and then um, different mix of culture but both of them are very spiritual and both of them are very relate to myth relate to um, stories and beliefs so it, which I really didn't pick that up when I was in Thailand. I feel like it was part of my normal life and it's, you know, everyone, it's normal, it's the norm. But when I'm actually moved here, that's partly why I did my research. I realised, my goodness, I'm so, like, um, different in my beliefs, in, in what I perceive as truth, in what I, you know, perceive as a norm my spirituality for example it's one thing that I I really realized when I came here like I really was very different to other people so I, I suppose that it's um what I get most out of both of my parents although despite that different there's very much in common in terms of what what they believe in mm. so have you changed your attitude to spirituality yeah. I think I'm constantly changing my attitude and that's just normal, isn't it? I mean, through life, we change all the time. We might have efforts to mort uh, immortalize certain parts, you know, for example, my project is um, kind of put that part of my life, my belief at that time to a concrete project. But even from then, which is two years ago, now I, I look at things very differently. And, you know, two, two years before that, I look at things very differently as well. And I, 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 was, I ordained as a monk last year. And so that, again, changed my life. And I think that's what's beautiful about 
us as human that we have this ability to keep you know revisiting our belief and revisiting um, our past and what make us us all the time so yes i constantly changing i still change yeah oh that's great um so to to end up do mm -hmm. you actually have any objects that you wear or are close to yes um I have, I carry with me my, because you know, I'm not into the Buddha emulets, although it's, this is my dad's um, devastation because, you know, it's, it's a big part of his life and he would love for me to actually carry on the tradition of collecting these emulets. And as I told you, it's almost his, he, he don't have health insurance, he don't have, you know, invest uh, money for his retirement, all this emulates. It's the way that he you know, collects his um, <laughs> life money to spend when he's retired. So it's a big thing for him that I'm not actually taking them on. And I feel a bit guilty actually not carrying them with me when I go to places. And I think when you interview a lot of Thai people, they would have an amulet with them when they travel. It's, it's, a, it's a thing, it's a sad thing to be done. But with me, the object that I really closely link with is um, a piece of cloth that my great grandfather used to wear. So it's you know the the bathing cloth where you would go into a river with, and that's the only the only object I have of him. And um, yeah, so it just it looks very mundane and it, it's not you know mythical in in any way and despite my mum's effort to trying to frame it in this golden frame with like describing it mythical qualities um i just have it folded in a little box that um that i carry it with yeah so that's that's my object thank you thank you i hope that helps <laughs>